So welcome to Music Gateway's new live series plugged in where we're going to be talking to artists from the Sync catalogue. Um, I'm Camilla Rose and we're going to be talking about their genres, their histories, the relevant topics surrounding the music they create. Um, and today we're joined by Ricardo Silva, Peruvian musician, composer, folklorist and record producer who has performed and toured extensively for over 40 years. Um, so Ricardo, how are you? Oh, I am very happy. I want to uh, greet everybody and give, send you the energy of the beautiful and Andes mountains where I, I am co calling you from uh, in the middle middle of the mountains. I love that. Have you always have you always lived there? Mm, I always been around these uh, sites because this is the center of the archeo archaeological uh, sites from Peru. So so the Incas culture is born right here where where we are talking. I love so, that. And yeah. kept with your music journey, can you take me right back to the beginning? You know, what was the first instrument and how did you kind of have such a like you know solid encounter with music? So um, I want to let you know first that uh, I grew up in the city, but my mm -hmm. my parents both are from the province. So uh, my ancestry is and Andean Inca and also mix it, as you can see also. My nose, I am, I have from Afro-Peruvian, very strongly. So I grew up in this neighborhood in Lima, one of the most popular neighborhoods is called La Victoria. So it's an old uh, neighborhood where, uh, with a lot of culture, our, a lot of life culture. So, and my, my parents' birthdays were celebrated with live music. So when I was maybe, I remember six, seven years old, I stood up. I didn't want to go to bed. I wanted to stay and see the party because yeah. I saw my mother and my father as never before. So every, every time they dance, every time they sing, was the most <laughs> amazing thing. So I, because life is working, worry, like taking care of the children. But when they dance on the party, when they sing on the party, they were different persons. They were really living into a heaven. <laughs> so that's in, in this serenade, uh, they come with the traditional, this is small guitar, Peruvian called charango, mm -hmm. 10 strings that you can hear in my productions. And also in, in Lima, uh, el cajón. You know what I'm talking about? El cajón, this percussion, Afro-Peruvian. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Who is very popular now. I, when I was touring lately, and I see in every music store in, in Europe, in USA, uh, full of cajones, no? Oh, they're using it now. <laughs> so, I was watching that. So, and they let me sit down on the cajon, but my feet couldn't reach the floor. So, I was sitting down on the cajon. It was, I was looking a little funny, but everybody was happy and they were applauding me for my tryouts. So I like that. <laughs> so how, when, when did the kind of instrumentation come into place? Because I know, you know, music was quite, is, is quite a big part of the culture. Like you said, you know, being a child, there being, you know, parties. So when, when did you first sort of like learn to play an instrument? Because I know you play quite a few instruments. So when did you first learn that the Caragano? Yeah. Um, you're right, Peru, if, if, for people who are like familiar with the Andean music or South American music, they will see that uh, they have, we are our own instruments, you know? like the, and they are very sweet people enjoy, like this one, you know? the pipes, you know? yeah. the sampoña we call, so it's a very uh, social instrument. You know? mm -hmm. Then we have the, the Andean flute, so my neighbor, was a teacher at the music school of folklore. Mm -hmm. So I was listening to him through the, <laughs> through the walls, like not only playing the melodies, but tuning, tuning the, the kenas for his students. So that was amazing. When I uh, reached my, when I was 12 years old, he got me one kena as a birthday gift. It was a plastic one. Okay, it was yeah. not as this. So this has uh, 
leave an amazing uh, popularity and also for the past, let's say, 30 years, not only this, not only this, but charangos and all kind of, even the cajon has uh, received, uh, uh, we have increased the production with high levels. We have great luthiers. So mm -hmm. you have this experience in a country. No, and the development of the music has to do a relationship between the musicians and the makers, the luthiers. If you don't, you don't have Remy's instruments, so that grow slows down. So we 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 create this revolution. We mm -hmm. we got this sense of pride uh, that has changed the whole thing. Now we have thousands of Kenas make weekly in tune that you can play with the keyboards, no? Yeah. So it's perfectly uh, uh, temperate, you know? So, it's, so it's, it's, it has an influence on the production of the music. So I start with the Kena, and then when I graduate high school, as a gift, I receive a charango. Okay. Charango is the tennis strings, who is a five double strings. So, for the traditional music, you can use like maybe two two keys, no? Major and minor. Yeah. Um, and with this, uh, with this, uh, you can do many thousands and beautiful melodies and different genders and different moods. You can be very soulful and you can go to joy and happiness and dance because dance is all of the, of the components. You have the music, the instruments, mm -hmm. the luthiers, and then you have the heritage. Okay. You have the tradition. The tradition in this uh, part of the world is collectivity, community, dancing on the streets <laughs> together. So if you connect these three and also uh, uh, hunger for the new generations. I am not any more of the new generation. <laughs> like are, my purse is one of these. But I put all these ingredients, also my growing up in a hood where people, we were like a little confused. We don't, we didn't know if we, we want to show pride to traditional music mm -hmm. or we are going to just uh, dance to the salsa music or the uh, rock music, the things that were happening in the 70s, 80s. So that was part of me growing up. So I love, I dance salsa. If you don't dance salsa in a um, Latin America city, you don't get a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It's period. You yeah, gotta dance. You have to do it. You don't need to, you don't need to be a great dance, but you need to dance. So, yeah. uh, so I, I grew up with this, you know, the, the, and after that, top 40s, whatever, but uh, I didn't lose my love to my tradition. And I have this energy to like put my stereo loud, open my doors, my windows, and show my neighbors my identity and also be a great dance, a salsa dancer. Yeah. So I can be both. Merge it all be. together. Yes. So when, can you tell me, can you explain to me like the, the different, I guess, genres of, um, you know, tradition, Andean music, because, you know, someone like myself, what would, I guess, what are the characteristics that makes a track or a song, um, you know, a traditional Andean sound? Yeah, we need to understand that uh, we have uh, more than 500 years of the presence of the Europeans, but not just the presence, no, they just the power, the presence, like running the country and exploiting yeah. the, the resources. And one of the things that has to do with, uh, with the oppression has to do that you got to manage people's minds, people's souls. So you got to get rid of the original religion. You got to get rid of the sometimes of the language. So one of the places where we have resist and we will have and where we have keep mm -hmm. and what I well who I am now, what I do is the result of the consequence of uh, to wake up, 
to the beauty and the value of our traditions, not using a uh, intellectual you know, understanding, but more, mostly in a spiritual, in a, uh, in a the continu continuity. You know? mm -hmm. So I will say there are many of the music that people are familiar, even this beautiful El Condor Pasa, so embody the the melody aspect of the Andean music. Mm -hmm. So you can you can identify Andean music, no, just by the melodies, no. Okay. But yes. So if that is enough, you can then understand that even if you do electronic uh, fusion. But it keeps the spirit and the truth of yeah. of where it comes from. Does a matter? But you can go into other situation that is not any other instruments than flutes and drums mm -hmm. with amazing harmonies and, and and rhythm concepts that don't require a slam uh, uh, drum sets. Mm -hmm. Don't require uh, bass or keyboards to be incredible rich uh, in the, in the in a mus musical aspects. It's just a different orchestral conceptions. So I enjoy the very very traditional who has not been uh, let's let's say uh, influenced by you no know, by uh, the presence of other instruments or modern instruments that keep just flutes, that keep uh, uh, drums. But when I say flutes, I, I say dozen of different kind of flutes yeah. that every region, every, every part, every countryside of the big cities, people use. So, uh, so some people play, let's say, actual music with Andean instruments. Sounds nice, but maybe it's not the presence of the melodies of the, you know, this kind of like pentatonic or like a, a ritual or just Andean melodies. So it sounds more jazzy, but I, I run a festival. So I run a festival where I put uh, these uh, contemporary pro uh, proposals with the, with the ensemble of the flutes and voices from the last community of the Incas living in Cusco on the mountains, the Quero Incataki. We cannot conceive this with our Western uh, uh, chromatic scales. Or, no? It has different tuning. It, uh, it, that music is made for ceremonies. Mm -hmm. But if you open your heart, and we have opened to the music from India or, the, or even the Africa, and we go all into just let this music flow you know, and enter your being, you will have an amazing musical experience who cannot be uh, described with the uh, Western uh, musical uh, theory. So I think one, one thing I've, I've, I've understood and I've really kind of grasped is that there's, it really boils down to, you know, the, the essence and there can be different sort of interpretations of, you know, the traditional music, but it really goes down to, I guess, the, the individual and their, their sort of, I guess, their, their emotions they're putting into the music they're creating, right? You say something very important. <laughs> the individuality is not an opposition of the community. Mm -hmm. They are just different functions of ourselves. So it's a, it's a part of my compositions who has um, in both albums, uh, I believe people are reviewing, uh, I have composition who are using chromatic scale. So that is not usual in the tradition. Okay. But, yeah, you understand. Yeah. But many, many people have recorded or doing videos with my chromatic song and they have put traditional. <laughs> so, because you, you don't think, you don't, you don't analyze, you just enjoy. Mm. If, the, if the song embodies the spirit and the message 
or the landscape you want to describe because our music is about visuals. Our music is about description or proposal of when you I play something, I may offer you to mountains, I may offer you stones, I may offer you a river, no? Yeah. So this is in my example. So as a composer, i one of the first Andean musicians who put, people have not even think about it. They don't, they just enjoy the melody. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's, uh, it's very important because this part of my being, Ricardo traveling, Ricardo listening, Ricardo learning, Ricardo watching, enjoying all the cultures, no? But yeah. the more, the more distant I want to, to be uh, in my work, from my roots, the closer I get. That yeah. doesn't matter if I put a little hip hop, reggae, or modern harmony, my soul is still an Inca. How, um, I wanted to ask, um, I guess, how does location play a role in, you know, inspiring you when you're creating, you know, new compositions? Because I know, obviously, where you're based at the moment, um, does, does that kind of, does that, is that something that continues, continually inspires you? Being um, in the mountains. <laughs> yes. You see, these moments that we are living in has created new, new situations. Now we are, we are like using the technology to, 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 to be humans, to connect. I am talking to you, so it's a, we are using this to, to still. So um, being on the mountains uh, gives me also a better view of what I did and also the way I want to do now. If one of my desires is to have like a, with all this experience and influence not to do like a let's say an ensemble you no know, mm -hmm. like or, or work with a director to do a, like so arrangements it's lovely but my call comes and like relax enjoy so if I, if I use these days on the mountains for like meditation and things, uh, uh, that's gonna be showing my music. Mm -hmm. But also it's, it's like a confirmation of, if I, all this, like I, I will be 40 years of, of like working in, like from my first composition. So I, I, I am getting a connection here that I didn't have ever before. I hope I can produce this in a new album, but mm -hmm. it's, it's working, it's working because also like the rendition of my music, my past music gets a different new, new, new life. No? Yeah, it's that kind of breathing new life into it. And I guess you, you touched on it briefly a bit earlier, but I think a lot of the other stuff you do as well, you, I, I know you've got your festival um, that you're part of, and I know you've got a music school as well that you founded. So I know that a lot of things that you're, you're obviously passionate about is, you know, um, I guess ensuring the, the tradition is carried on to the next generation. So why is that also important for you that, you know, um, younger people and, you know, people from other, other places are, you know, learning and understanding about, about the music? I would put you an example. I told you we are in the capital of the sacred valley of the Incas. So it means we are like two hours, not less than three hours away from Machu Picchu. Okay. This great Inca city that is very well known on the world. And uh, we are like one hour away from Cusco city, who is an amazing place to, to visit and see. Yeah, um, but uh, as many of the Peruvians, we have not spoken anymore the language of the Incas, we speak Spanish. So, so I go to the schools here where the people still speaking Quechua here in Cusco. So there's the valley where I live, all the people, most of the older people, like about like 30 years, still speaking fluently. And the new generation, they are divided. Some of them keep on speaking on the, everybody's bilingual, no? Mm -hmm. But we have been in many years that the, our elder were telling, 
don't speak Quechua, don't speak Quechua, because you are going to, to a school or you are going to this big city, they are going to make fun of you if you speak the ori original language. So we, are, we have changed this situation in the past 30, 40 years. It's not finished, you are used in the beginnings. So, but I know when I go to the schools, you not know, to do my work, uh, what is the reality? So I, I play with this to the children. And I say, I, I, I show videos and I say, I did this in the USA. Oh, wow. and uh, prophet, uh, teacher, do you speak English? Yes, I speak English. I also speak Spanish, so I am bilingual. So, ah, okay. So who is bilingual in this place? Nobody answered. They are really people from the countryside, from like, from the Quechua culture. So I say to them, raise your hands. The people who have like the, the parents or grandparents speaking Quechua. So there are maybe 15. So three do quickly. One, two, three. Then the next three, a little slowly. Four, five, six, and then all of them, all of them raise their hands. And I say, okay, you are bilinguals. You are by you, you gotta be proud. It's the same as me speaking other languages. No, I speak other languages because I, so, and that is the way that we are working now. Here, uh, I am telling you, it's happening. It's not, it's not down, but uh, the festival has this opportunity you know, for the local community you know, that work in our festival and also the, the public. We are going to have this year an uh, online festival. It's, the name oh, is wow. very easy. Festival de Musica Nativa. It's very easy, no? Festival, Festival de Musica de Nativa. nativa. Okay. Yes. You will see there what happened. So, and it's, it, 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 uh, it, it is very open. We have also like ceremonies, rituals, no? We mm -hmm. have uh, uh, workshops. I teach. Cajon, like for, in 40 minutes, I teach Cajon to everybody can feel that can play. So this is happening. So my music uh, is not, I didn't, it's not I was looking at what's happening and it's, I, I want to do this, I want to do that. I want to do an uh, electronic album. I will do uh, like a virtuos. Uh, no, it just happened because uh, it was the moment I have the people I uh, have the support of the executive producers, who is, it's very, very important. So uh, there are many things happening in, in for example, in, in our countries, but uh, the production, the producers are limited to what is, well, what, with what has an, a commercial appeal. Yeah. Who have, those maybe going to like be like receiving like back money. So. And then we have people who produce with a, maybe with that desire inside, if that's happened, success, like commercial success, welcome. But no, it's not the core of the thing. The core of the thing is you want to say something. You want to leave a testimony of something. Or you want to like uh, send something to the future. Mm. So you just do it. And then you have the composers, you have the, the musicians, but you don't have the producers. You don't have the money. Yeah. So how many great projects we will never know because they never record it. That's so true. So and you'll never you'll never get to know. That's my appreciation for the people who are not just executive producers, but mm -hmm. they are executive producers of things, interesting things that would be lost if they are, didn't exist. Yeah. Where, where, has <laughs> your, where has your music been used in the past? Um, so any of your compositions, what has it been used for previously? Yes. Uh, uh, so, like, of course, because of this growing uh, changes we are living in uh, documentaries. Okay. Yeah. Documentaries. 
and that make me this uh, make me laugh. Uh, two Peruvian soap operas. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> well, as, the, as the opening music. No, uh, one was yes, uh, like uh, like uh, even for the like the ad advertisement of or some of the campaigns for this soap opera. The other one was when the it was a very limeños. Uh, soap opera, uh, like, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, stereotype, rich, stereotype rich people, okay. like uh, having like, but going to the mountains, visiting Cusco, like going to an, an encounter or to live experiences on the mountains. So uh, uh, they didn't, maybe the, they didn't want to use a, a traditional or regional folkloric music. I released my first album in the 80s, who have already my compositions oh, wow. and with the fusion it would, we were using electric bass drum sets but every everything else cajon samponas uh, charango flutes so it, it has the, the i believe they did it because people have already uh, uh, stereo you know have already also like uh, at the new sound of the of the times, so mm -hmm. and people were used to have the bass range on the ears. Oh, okay. So they were not Andean music who have bass. It was yeah. a very popular with the young people soap opera. So our music was following what they were using from other, uh, you know, in songs. So they were using something that would keep the the attention of the ears. Of the people who were hooked up and these mm -hmm. sounds of the 80s. No? That's really exciting. Where, where would you like your to see your music used in the future? So what would be your your the dream for a piece of your music to be used? If it's a film, I know you've had documentaries, you've had soap operas, so where would you love to hear your music being featured? If, oh <laughs> <laughs> yes. The dream of every artist is uh, the more you approach, uh, like uh, you know, your uh, old ages, you that you like you, your heritage. What you you want to to leave your music, but you can't be happy with the people who listen to you now. This would be enough. But you are always when in my case that I am devoted to develop and to increase the self-esteem, the pride of my people. I, and I know that I am offering um, a kind of music that is rich in possibilities. The people just need to open or to give me an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So if I go to a big concert or like a rock concert, I bring my composition, my band, they give me two minutes, I will be successful because I know how to put it, no? Yeah. So, I might so, uh, but I early I told you that when I compose or arrange, mm -hmm. I am thinking things. I am visualizing things. I am looking like I am giving uh, emotions. Mm -hmm. So it's by the people who can use my music in different setups. Some people can be using my as they did in the soap soap opera to enhance, enrich the presence of Machu Picchu, Cusco, uh, the, no, even the, air, the Cusco airport, the, everything. It was a romance on the streets of Cusco. So it was, if they want to put it, a romantic segment from one of my compositions, they would cut it the right part, the right segment that maybe for the director is, gives what they want. So um, I have produced, I remember for the, now, a little song in the 80s in New York, New York City for a documentary of uh, about like these three nonprofit organizations mm -hmm. who have showing like a, this Peruvian uh, recipient of, of the, the help who did, who did lose her legs. So it, it was about like giving her an opportunity, you no know, coming from a, like a accident in Peru into being adopted by an American family mm -hmm. who give her a new life. And then she, she swims 
on, on a pool at the end of the documentary. So uh, I can see that the, the richness of the, these instruments gives the people who, who use, who add image or, at, or the opposite, who wants to add music into the images. So I believe this, I believe it's happening. <laughs> what would um, I wanted to ask as well? What what other sounds are you in, inspired by, and what other sounds would you love to to kind of merge your music with? Because you've mentioned like you know rock a couple of times. You've mentioned like electronic music as well. So are you are you actively listening to those those sounds? Um, and how do you see you know your you know the your sound blending with that as well? I believe it's already happening in the world. So okay. we, with the technology, with the high speed communications, also the easy, easiness that before the pandemic was for to travel, not to go to mm -hmm. festivals or wherever, no? So we believe in a, the humanity is connected now. Our heads, our hearts are not connected, but there are many people who are connected. So. This is what I believe. So if as uh, the uh, curator you know, or director of, or like a, you know, artistic director of, of a festival who mm -hmm. is appealing not just for Peruvians, we have Brazilians coming for the past two years, Brazilians, we have Argentinians, this year we have Colombians, we have a guy com coming from Spain. So it's already happening. We have, we are crossing so much information. If you see the beats, you see the sounds, it's happening, it's happening. So I am really, really a lover of the sounds of the world. So mm -hmm. I love from the traditional, just one note, no whole flute with many possibilities. Use. So, and then also because my my culture is full of colors, I love psychedelics. I love like lead colors. I love like I love like deep house. But I bring into my festival the people who have never been on major stages, who have like maybe it can be know by the archaeologists, anthropologists, mm -hmm. or, or keepers of, you know, the, the ancient traditions, but I am bringing them and putting together with the other ones, the, the ones who are even, this year I have a, a band who have like 25 million, two, two videos with 25 million. Wow. Uh, and my festival, they are Peruvians, so this is the result of the new era. So I am gonna put then the same program with a segment of history, archeology, span and then uh, a more contemporary, oh, sorry, traditional sound. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it's, it's about also creating public audiences, no? People yeah. are, with this situation that we're living in, people has been more open to new sounds. People who are used to consume just one style, they have listened to their friends or to the loved ones, music uh, styles, or going back to what the grandparents hear because yeah. they have so many time. <laughs> so, time. So it's, yeah, so it's a time for us to, and that's happened also. We have not made your live concerts, so people are watching uh, cable, people are watching Netflix, people are like, uh, I see movies are going to be online, whatever, yeah. so, uh, so some things are going, something, some things are damaged, and some things are going, getting an opportunity. Yeah. No, so audiovisuals, movies, documentaries, music, everything's gonna get an opportunity, because even for the start starters you know you just record it put it in youtube and, and and get what you get 
what, what, and to close off, what, what are you working on at the moment? Because I know you're, you're busy with the, the online festival, so you must be busy setting that up. Are you working on another album and anything like that? If, uh, I want, as I to, told you before, I am thinking to have a new, very simple uh, production with me playing my flutes or maybe charango but in a, in a very, very more like peaceful mood that people can enjoy and have me like to appease, to relax, to avoid the stress of, of you know, the consequences of the times we live in. But on the other side, I am really, really excited about uh, bringing these new sounds of these flutes of people into production where I can maybe use like beats, mm -hmm. no? With this non-conventional, they are very rhythmic. So, you know, uh, contemporary productions allow you to do whatever you imagine. But uh, my festival is in October. Uh, I am just excited and I want just to thank everybody, yourself uh, for the attention. It has been an opportunity for me to rethink and review what I was doing these years, no? Mm -hmm. And I was doing, and, and why I am doing now, and I, what I want to do in, in the future. Amazing, Ricardo! Thank you so much for your time today. It's been it's been really good to get a real deep understanding of you know the traditional Peruvian Andean sound um and just really an insight into you as well so so thank you so much um yeah thank you okay send you all the energy of our mountains in pachamama thank you bye bye okay so thank you for tuning to our discussion um we really hope you found this a useful to get a better understanding of traditional latin american music and the genres within it Please let us know in the comments what you thought as well and what genres you'd like to see next time. Thank you.